Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Greetings, everyone. Hope all has been well. Sorry for the time we've been absent, but Ahai has been very good. We've been very gracious, prospering the work as yeah. he has been here setting up his church, getting us into a nice environment in preparation for the gathering yes. of his people, of his saints, of all nations, of Israel, and of the Gentiles. So we are very much missed you all and hope you all have been taking the time to watch all the videos, get caught up on the doctrine, yes. and very much hope that you've been practicing the fruits of the Spirit. Give all praise to Ahaya Ashere Ahaya and his son Yache, our Adana, and the Ruaka Kwadoshi, our mother. Amen. So today we are going to look at the ten horns. As if you all have been keeping up, you saw the news segment on what they're preparing to do in Babylon. And we're looking at the ten horns to identify who they are today and also in preparation for some short segments on identifying Gog, the woman that sitteth on the beast, and who are the four beasts, and other things like that. So, here we go. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 17. Revelation 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven veils, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore which sitteth upon many waters. And this whore is what is known as America today, and she is the daughter of Babylon. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Right, I'm going to look at what these seven heads and ten horns are. I know she's sitting upon that beast. That beast is carrying her. So this is the power that's actually gotten America to where it is. That's been holding her up all this time. Continue. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, covered in deck with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? And I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast, that which carry of her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. And now the angel is going into it to explain of who the woman is and who the beast is. And remember, we're looking at the ten horns, identifying who they are today. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. What's coming is going to be complete evil. All right. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Now the seven mountains are in Rome. This is the Quirinal, the Viminal, the Palatine, the Cabine, the Aventine, the Esquiline, and the Capitoline. These are the seven mountains where the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. All right. So the five that are fallen was Egypt. They ruled the world, enslaving Israelites. Right. Then Assyria, they took the northern kingdom. Then Babylon, they took the southern kingdom. <laughs> then the Medo-Persian Empire, that's the story of Esther. And then the Grecian Empire, that we know of Antiochus when you read the book of Maccabees. Maccabees. So these are the five that already had their dominion. And notice, this is John. This is in the days of the Roman Empire. So that was the five that had their dominion. And John is sitting currently in the Roman Empire. All right? So the five that are fallen. And the other is not yet come. Five that are fallen and one is. So the one that is is Rome. Because that was literally happening right then and there. Right. And the one that the other is not yet come, this is the Holy Roman Empire. Right. Continue. And the beast that was and is not, and is even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. So we have, you had the five, and then the one that is, which is Rome. That was number six. six. And then the one that is to come and rule for a short space, that's number seven. That's yes. the Holy Roman Empire. And then the eighth is actually the beast, but the beast is the one that was and he is not it's because the same beast is from the get right. it's the same fourth beast is just now he's really coming out 
And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet. Now these ten kings are the ten horns, and this is the initial ten nations of the Western European Union, which is a part of the modern EU, the European Union today. The Western European Union is the former association. It started from 1955 to 2011 of ten countries, Belgium, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, and the United Kingdom that operated as a forum for the coordination of matters of European security and defense. It contributed to the creation of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So it contributed to the creation of NATO and worked in cooperation with that organization. The WEU became the primary defense institution of the European Union in the 1990s. Though it gave up that role in 2001, the WEU grew out of the Brussels Treaty of 1948, an agreement between Belgium, France, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom to provide for collective defense and to facilitate cooperation in economic, social, and cultural matters. NATO and the Council of Europe, both of which were formed in 1949, developed out of that framework. And so you can see that these great powers today, though you don't have the Western European Union, you can see that the powers of today, NATO, EU, they stem from the Western European Union. In 1954, the Brussels Treaty was strengthened and modified to include West Germany and Italy to end the occupation of West Germany and to include West Germany and NATO. And the WEU came into being on the fifth month, sixth day of 1955. Essentially, we have understanding on who the ten horns were, the ten kings that have not received power yet. Because you have Belgium, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, and United Kingdom. These ten kingdoms, they have not had the dominion like America has had. So those are the ten horns of this beast. And we're going to see what is coming from these ten horns as we continue reading. But receive power as kings one hour with the beast. So they didn't have their dominion before, but they're going to receive their dominion one hour with the beast. This is at the end. This is going to be for a short time that they're going to give themselves unto the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. The concept of one world government was foretold unto John long ago. These shall make war with the lamb. And the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Adonai of Adonaiyes, and Melika of Melikas. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. The war of the beast is going to be to literally kill the people of Alahayim, the Israelites predominantly, and the Gentiles that believe on Yahche. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So there we see the waters was a similar tool of the people of the world. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. And this is what's happening now. The EU, they don't like America. America has been breaking many contracts and doing things. America is very lifted up. America is very prideful. It's completely given in to the, the spirit of Satan. Right. And they are going to destroy America by letting Iran do it. If you saw the news, they talked about how the people that had the vouchers for the oil, they're not buying any more oil from Iran because right. they're forcing Iran's hand That's to right. actually have to do something. Because for them, they know that once America falls, they get the dominion. Right. The dominion that Revelation has foretold that they were waiting for. And it goes on to say, For Elohim have put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of Elohim shall be fulfilled. So this is also why we give praise to Ahia, because they're all doing his will. Right. We have talked about Jeremiah 51 and 7. He said, Babylon is a cup in his hand. He controls everything. They're literally doing his will. So it's encouraging for us to be faithful in doing what he asks us to do. Keeping his commandments and bearing the fruits of his spirit. And 
keeping Yacha in our hearts and keeping Ahaya in our minds that we will be kept because he controls everything. He is Allah. That's right. He is Allah. There is none besides him and there is none like unto him. He had said he would do it and it shall not fall to the ground. And they're literally doing exactly what he wants them to do right. to fulfill his word. It's amazing. Yes, it is. He is wonderful. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. And that great city, this is America. So there we have the ten horns. We'll run through that one more time. It's Belgium, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, and the United Kingdom. Those are the ten horns that are going to have their dominion after the fall of the whole, they will give themselves unto the beast. So let's understand it on that. I am willing to get to move forward and look into some more things to understand the times to come. Shalom. Shalom.